me see my RF. Okay. Can I see your ID? Uh, sure, here you go. Thank you. Where do you live, Bart? Is that okay with you? Sure, go ahead. Okay. So, tell me about an interesting place in your town or the city where you live. Uh, well, well, as you as I said before, I just was born and brought up in uh, some of the only deserts in this place. So there were many caravans and people used to come and trade uh, back in the day when it was 1998, I think, or 1995. I was really small. I used to go with my dad to these off-road deserts. And we have many marketplaces over there, which and where many people used to sell homemade clothes and homemade food. But uh, as the time went by and uh, globalization took place, so there were no more of those marketplaces uh, anywhere existing. So that's a memory which I really cherish for now. Okay. And that was a place I can't forget. Yes. Okay. Do you like when it rains? Why? Uh, particularly where I live, there is not so much rain. But when it does rain, yeah, it's kind of change in the weather, so I do love it. But uh, if you imagine it raining uh, all throughout the whole week, or like in the States or other northern countries, I don't think I would like it that much. Uh, I would prefer a sunny day instead, in which everything is really lit up, and you can even see, uh, see far away rather than the foggy rain days. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you think the weather affects a person's mood and why? Weather does affect a person's mood, I would say. Uh, and why is that? And why is that? Uh, why do you think yes? Well, it all depends on uh, the person is having a good day or a bad day because if he's having a really bad day and he comes out to a really uh, lovely day in which there's a uh, what do you call it? Really sunny day, I would say. Uh, it, it will just, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, you know, automatic, well, what do you, what do you call it? It's like a feeling that you're surrounded by positive energy. Uh, so it really lights, lights up your mood. And if you're having a really good day, on the other hand, and you come out, uh, you know, to celebrate outside or go out with friends and you find the weather quite uh, devastating or I would say uh, quite rainy or snowy. So that automatically puts a, a break on your happiness so yeah it does affect uh, to a certain extent i would say okay that's good okay was there any time when you went out without an umbrella or a raincoat and it started to rain oh uh, yes there there was a day like uh here we don't have we don't do not have rain much uh, very often sorry but uh, when it does rain it, it rains continuously and it breaks like doesn't go uh, all the way throughout the day so it goes like for two hours we have rain and the next two hours you don't have any so i was uh, one of these days i was out there uh, going out for some to run some errands uh, i forgot my umbrella or even the raincoat so i was just wearing a t-shirt and uh, when i when i went out there i my car had low fuel so i just uh, would go stop by to fuel it up on a gas station and all of a sudden of course it started to rain and so i was really soaked up when i got back home it was like i just took okay. a shower okay uh do you remember any friend from your primary school uh, as a matter of fact yes uh, well it's a really long time ago but i do uh remember this a friend called uh, frederick mm -hmm. uh we used to be in the same class and uh, he was really kind of a nerd i would say like a geeky guy because mm -hmm. we used to play with uh, uh you know like indoor games or even go out there. but he used to play with chemistry sets and uh, uh educational toys sometimes things like these so but he was a good friend and we, we lost in touch because he moved to New York and I was I came to Saudi Arabia in the Middle East so kind mm -hmm. of lost there yeah okay are your friends mostly from school or from workplace uh, most of them are from school uh, I would say because the school is a place where uh, you spend a lot of time uh, during your teenage years so you you know like it's you uh by default or automatically uh make bonds with the people around them around yeah. there sorry and uh, those some some of those bonds live throughout your whole life and some of them 
are not even meant to be, uh, you know, uh, meant to last long. So yeah, I do make, uh, I did make many friends in the school, and still, uh, still right now, I have them. I have, co I have keep con constant contact with them. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Do you use internet for chatting with friends online? Yes, because. Uh, as uh, as right now in the 21st century, I think there are almost 100 apps uh, solely developed only to make communication easier. For instance, we have Facebook, we have uh, Messengers, we have Yahoo, and uh, what's not even I don't I can't even recall all of the apps right now. But yes, uh, I primarily usage of my of myself on these apps are to talk with friends who are distant from me or we live in another country. Yes. Okay, that's great. Okay, so uh, have you got a pen and a pair going to give you a cue card? Okay? okay, and I want you to describe a good parent that you know. Okay, and here's your cue card. Oops. And I will let you know when to start and when to stop. Okay, sure. So, okay, I'm just going to switch it for a minute. Okay, so I will give you back your screen actually. Okay, so I'm going to start now. Okay, and you have a minute to prepare the notes. Okay, so when I okay. tell you to stop, kindly stop. Okay, and then I'll let you know when to speak. Okay, so start, and here's your screen. You can see, right? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, cool. So, okay, I'll give you two sec few seconds of. Love. Okay, your time is up. Please stop writing. Okay, done. Okay. Cool. And I will let you know when to speak. Okay. Now, you might know that you have to speak for two to three minutes. Okay. Yes. So, when I tell you to start speaking, you can start. Okay. So, you've already got the question, so I'm not giving that thing back. Mm -hmm. And I, now, you can start now. Uh, well, I would be speaking about a parent, which I knew back in high school. Uh, like I said before, I had a friend. Uh, so what happened is that each and every day, uh, my friend, he had, you know, he used to get a new pencil set or a new lunchbox or a new bag. So I, on the other hand, I was a child, so I really was fascinated by that. I used to think, you know, like my parents just gave me like uh, new stuff only but birthdays, uh, on your birthdays are on uh, like end of a month. But this guy where he gets, uh, every day he gets a new thing. So uh, of course as a child, uh, that fascinates you like and someone getting new stuff each and every day, which uh, usually children cherish. So that was one story which I remember of a parent being, uh, of a good parent. Uh, but currently my next door neighbors, uh, their son and daughter they usually come over here because, uh, to play because uh, my elder brother and her, and basically my niece, uh, they're of the same age, so uh, they usually come over here for a long period of time and uh, start playing. But every time, every half an hour, every one hour, their mother calls uh, calls on our landline and she asks, uh, is, is, are the children okay? Are they being fed properly? Are they being cared? And is anyone there to supervise them? So uh, that level of uh, protection or being, I would not say it's overprotective, but it's really good. Uh, I would say those parents are doing a really good job looking after their child. So I believe that these are one of the qualities which should, uh, which should be there in a parent. And as per myself, I do not have much experience because I'm not a parent yet. So I would myself uh, would seek advice from others of how to be a good parent. 
but so far I have these qualities up my sleeve, which I can uh, illustrate to others as well. And what else can I say about being a good parent? Well, it's not all about... Okay, uh, your time is up. Oh, thank God. Up. Okay, I will add a Very good. Okay, third section. Let me ask you a question related to this. Uh, so what do other people think of this parent like that you were talking about? The person you were talking about? What do other people think of them? Uh, the childhood one or the uh, or the one which uh, I just took, I was talking about recently, yes, the neighbors? Yeah, the, yes, the neighbors. Uh, people, some, some of them really think that it's being, uh, the mother or the father is being overprotective, but I don't see it in that way. Like, uh, because of course they're like still really small. So uh, for at this age, child should, in my opinion, should be uh, supervised at all times. So uh, of course, when uh, children grow up, eventually they, are, they, they themselves become responsible for their, their own actions. So, and they themselves can call and inform their parents where they are, what they're doing. So, at that, in that case scenario, it's a different story. But for the time being, as toddlers, uh, so I would say yes. So, so, all. so you don't agree with the people who think they are being overprotective. What, in your terms, is being overprotective then? Overprotective, I would say, is that uh, overprotective because there's a certain age in which a child, uh, you know, uh, starts to adopt his own privacy, right? He has, he wants his own room or he wants his own cell phone. So uh, giving the child that space and those benefit uh, creates a bond of trust. So I would say uh, if you interfere in someone's privacy, because even as an adult, you would not, you would not like anyone interfering in your privacy. So you should give the same space to your children, mm -hmm. uh, provided they reach a respectable age, of course. Yeah. Um, so okay. in my case, that's being overprotective. If you just keep on interfering in. Okay, says. it's going to be like a discussion. So we have been talking about a good parent in part two of the test. Now I would like to ask you some general questions related to that. Let's talk about parenting skills. Let's discuss the typical situation of today where both parents go to work. What options are available in your country for the care of young children? Uh, usually I think there are only two or three options available, uh, as I recall. Uh, mostly in my country, uh, grandparents are the ones who are taking care of the newborns even or even the children. Uh, because I don't think many people uh, go for the child medical center, uh, not sorry, child care centers, uh, mm -hmm. and it is it's very expensive, uh, and they don't, and it's all trust issues. And uh, usually, every day now and then, you see in the media that uh, children are being exploited uh, by adults or elderly who are who are, who are out of their family circle. So, uh, I, in my opinion, I guess uh, what I see right now is mostly in my country, uh, what do you call uh, your family members or your elderly who are, in the, who are in the family circle or in the nucleus of the family are taking care of the children while your parents are going to work. Okay, that's great. Do you think that the parenting skills have changed over the past 10 to 20 years? Parenting skills have changed. So what you meant is that do parents... Uh, not take care or do take care of your children in care no in like have the, have the no i just mean like the methods of parenting like you know the kind of skills that the, par the parents need for in order to bring up their children well like you know have they changed over the past 10 to 20 years uh, i would not think so they have changed much uh mm -hmm. even in the past people uh sorry parents usually uh, wanted everything uh everything uh, top notch or the best uh, care a child could have or they could provide to their child children uh bring, ranging from uh, going to perfect schools and uh, having the best gadgets or uh, what do you call uh, uh, you know best in everything i would say even when it comes to sports or athletics so parenting skills itself have not changed over the past decade but uh, you should say the wants of a child has changed pretty much. Before children used to go out and play, uh, nowadays they have their Xbox and PS4s and consoles to entertain themselves at home. So uh, I would say, yeah. So I would say the wants of children are changed. That that too is a cause of technology and globalization. Mm -hmm. uh, parenting skills, on the other hand, remains the same. Uh, same things, only a different era of technology. I would say. Okay, so let's move to the next question then. Do you think it is right that the children, parents leave their children in front of the telly 
after coming back from work because they're tired? Uh, no. Uh, because, uh, as we say, anything too much can be harmful for, uh, can be harmful for anyone. So in the, what do you call leaving child behind a television for long hours, first of all, uh, it would have a negative impact uh, health-wise, which is his eyes and uh, of course, when you even your mind sometimes get used to or get addicts or get addicted to the uh, to watching such uh, long hours of cartoons or any other program. Uh, and on the other hand, of course, you cannot leave your child unsupervised long hours on a TV, uh, which will lead to what do you call if there is no parental lock on the television as well. So that will lead to uh, the uh, catastrophes. Uh, yeah, so I don't, in my opinion, I don't, I don't think they should be left unsupervised. Even if uh, a parent is tired coming back from work, uh, he should first attend to his, uh, his or her daughter or son. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, rest of the things can come after. Okay, yeah. great. Do you think it is important for the parents to... Oh, yes, it is very important. But uh, these days, you don't see that much happening. But uh, it is quite important, I would say, as uh, being a father or a mother, I would say, uh, Children or their uh, what do you call it? Their sons or daughters are the first mentor or the first uh, you know like uh, role model which a child sees uh, because uh, he's the one uh, or sorry uh, their mother or father are the one who uh, makes the child learn how to speak, how to talk, uh, ranging from paying their tuitions to feeding them. So uh, how, do, how do you think it will affect the parents and children born? How how do you think that will affect that will be affected? If, oh, yes. less time. If, they, if they do not spend much time, so children would tend to see, uh, as we see nowadays as well, they, they tend to make uh, their friends or even their uh, parents of their friends as their own parents. Like they, they see a fatherly figure in their uh, elder friend, I would say, or even at the neighbors or because they're not getting the uh, care and attention uh, which should originally be provided by the parent. Mm -hmm. So uh, they tend to get it if they find it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, they would, of course, uh, start to bond and trust that person, mm -hmm. uh, which can be, which depends again if the person is from a really outside, like he's not even the family, and mm -hmm. he doesn't have uh, what do you call, uh, uh, not the uh, best thing for the child. So that again would lead to other uh, major effects. So okay, uh, okay. Are. So that was the end of your speaking test. Okay, uh, Amir, I'm going to give you some feedback now. Okay. Sure. Um, firstly, you were very good. Okay. So be very positive. I'm sure you're going to do really well. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you the scores that I think, like, you know, according okay. to what you actually said in the test today. Sure. So as you know, that there are four criteria, right? So first yeah. of all, I was really impressed with your lexical resources, which is basically the vocabulary, okay? The kind of words that you're using, gadgets, improvisation, and all these high level words, like, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure why they gave you a 7.5 because these are like level 8 even uh, that, know like, you know? <laughs> so uh, yeah, definitely your vocabulary is really good, okay? Uh, and if I was they're like, you know, I would definitely give you at least an eight, okay? 7.5 to eight, eight, like I would say, okay? So your vocabulary is really good, so try to use that, okay? One thing that I will tell you, like, you know, uh, yeah. is like, you know, although your vocabulary, overall, your vocabulary is very good, but one mm -hmm. thing I noticed was when you were answering one of the questions, okay, mm -hmm. um, you use exactly the same word that was used in the question, uh, yeah. You use the same word important. Okay, now it's not a big mistake. Okay, I'm not gonna say like, you know, it will really lower your score because overall it's about the whole thing. Yes, but yes. just because you are already at a very high level, you are already at 7.5 and I want you to get 8 or something like that. Okay, so yeah. I would like, you know, um, advice to like, you know, instead of using the same word that is being used in the question, just say the word that you repeated from the question true. was important. Okay. True, so there's true. so many words you can say essential. One of the very high level word that I can, I can tell you is indispensable. Indispensable means yeah. extremely important, crucial. Yeah. Okay. So you can use that yeah. word tomorrow in your test. Okay. Indispensable. Perfect. Okay. Indispensable, yeah. Yes, indispensable. Okay. No, it's like even I don't even uh, at that moment. So that's <laughs> yeah, really I, I understand. Uh, I understand. But, but try yeah, to like that, you. That's exactly yeah. That's the whole yeah. point. That's 
my my point is to tell you how you can improve i know you're uh, already really good 7.5 is a very good mark uh, like you know but we need to see how to improve even more because mm-hmm. like you know at the end yeah. of the day it's all about improving true okay um okay so your lexical resources was very good okay now i'll come to your pronunciation pronunciation is very good okay you pronounce all the words very clearly you speak with the right pace okay so you are not rushing through or something so it's really good okay pronunciation is no problem and you've got that american accent as well which kind of helps okay although the accent doesn't matter but if you do have yeah. some accent it does help in some ex- i think so personally okay. yeah it does Uh, yes so uh, these are the two criteria now like uh, yeah you are very fluent okay and you coher- you are very coherent as well okay your speech is connected your sentences are connected well okay Correct. i'll give you a 7 for that uh, but one thing that i noticed like you know uh, mm-hmm. that although you were very fluent overall okay mm-hmm. i did notice like you know you kind of like you know in one or two questions you were like uh, okay what do you say then like that you know like I mean like, yeah, you like to, uh, you, you I was, I was to talking to myself but it, it, it yeah it's, it's yeah but thing is like uh, I will I will I suggest you not to do that in the real test okay I mean if you're th- if you're thinking something don't show it to the examiner that you're thinking yeah, think in your head right. okay and yeah keep do it, not say it loud yeah, yeah keep right. it to yourself because then the examiner might think okay this person maybe he's not, he's struggling with the vocabulary or he's struggling yeah. with the ideas why do you want to give that impression yeah. to the examiner don't exactly. like just keep it yes. to yourself you know exactly. So That's even right. if you're thinking don't say like because I did notice in two or um, I think two to three questions you did say like that um mm-hmm. you actually said um uh, think also twice okay so don't do that okay try yeah. like you know what pick one idea and speak about that that's all like you know you don't have to give a list of ideas okay you can yeah. only take one idea and just explain it fully you understand what i mean because if you mm-hmm. think of two three ideas and then you're and sometimes what you were doing was it also mm-hmm. comes in being fluent what you were doing was like you know you were kind of completing one sentence then you were having mm-hmm. like a few seconds pause then the next mm-hmm. sentence which is not good yeah, because uh, it's not it's fluent it's like switching too quick yeah yes yes okay. yes so that's why i'm saying if finding ideas is your problem that i i feel mm-hmm. like, like you know that's one thing another one before just like, yeah, yeah yeah so like you yeah. know kind of uh, just try to pick one idea and talk about it okay not don't try mm-hmm. to switch ideas if you have to think so much that it it's going to affect your you fluency okay Th- that's okay. one thing that i noticed because you did that yes, yes. okay so, and try yeah. not to like you I'm, know i was uh, writing them down one by one yeah yeah that's and right. try not to do like you know don't make like you know uh, and then like you know because you did twice okay so it's not oh. good okay and it will definitely improve your score okay so in this one i'll give you 7 okay instead of 8 yeah sure but be strict okay. as you can because it's you know, yeah okay, yeah uh okay grammatical range and accuracy that was very good okay your tenses okay. were fine the range you used was appropriate according to the questions there was absolutely no mistake in your tenses i i i absolutely don't wonder why they gave you 7.5 because this is the minimum mark that you do, do deserve and i hope that you get an 8 tomorrow or oh, more I than that actually so like you know and um so this was like you know your general feedback okay oh. and um okay i'll just give you a few more tips as well okay sure, sure. um in the question that where i asked you like you know where do you live i'm actually going to send you the uh, like you know that document uh, with the vocabulary okay but i'm just going to explain what you will find in that document okay how it, how you can use it basically so all the questions that you did to, with me today okay i'm going to give you the vocabulary li- related to that okay so for example like you know, uh, where do you live okay now you could have used a word reside i reside here or something because reside is a good word it's a high level word okay uh, yeah um it's like synonym to live so it's really yes happy. yes yes because you know you you use this word and like you know then the examiner knows yes like you know okay when i asked you about the weather how do, uh, do you think the weather affects a person's mood you you could say something like the weather has a strong influence on per- person's mm-hmm. emotions yeah. and mood you understand yeah. because you're using yeah. all the vocabulary is very good because but if you yeah. even improve yeah. one part it will improve yeah. your overall score you know exactly yeah so try to target so like, like you know like why repeating whatever the question is so. yes exactly because in one in one or two questions you did repeat what the, yeah, the word the i was using in the, the question yes. yeah yeah uh, 
uh, also uh, you said lost in touch i don't know if if it was a mistake or if it was a connection problem but you said i heard something lost in touch there mm-hmm. is nothing such as lost in touch you just l- lose touch like you know you're you're out of contact mm-hmm. with your friends Our that's con- what you say contact. you you don't say lost in exactly. touch there, that's nothing like that exactly. that's not english exactly. that's not proper english Exactly. Yeah, and in the same question, you were doing a lot of uh, um, as well that I noticed. Okay. Um, also, in in one of the places you were you repeated it's it's again like you know like you were oh, talking okay. like you know but you repeat yeah, yeah. try not to do that. Okay. Um, uh, you were self correcting yourself sometimes, which is good. Okay. Yeah, but if you do it more than it's yeah, uh, don't do that too much. Yeah, and yeah. also a use. I heard you saying something about elderlies. Now, did you say uh, this elderlies? So I because elderly I remember. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because if There's you no use this word elderlies, okay, that is wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay, there is no such word as elderlies. Okay, you just say elderly people. Okay, or elderly. the elderly. Mm-hmm. okay exactly. that elderly people look after the kids like nowadays elderly. or uh, elderly some like you know no elderly there is no word yeah, for such there is no plural of elderly yeah. yes exactly there is no plural like that okay elderly that's all elderly. okay that, this is important okay um yeah. what else i noticed with you this time or it's elderly yeah and Okay, I already told about that. You can actually use the word instead of being important uh, because you did examiner and when your time did he ask you really fast? Like was it like back to back? Like as soon as he finished a question and he did not wait for you to answer it fully, then he asked the other question. Like was it like that? And no, like, like if if you're like for example, like you know, if you didn't hear the question properly, let's say, okay, mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. know, you can always ask them to repeat the question. There's nothing wrong in that. They're not gonna penalize you for like you know asking you to repeat But a question. I had it like twice. Like once, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the examiner. The first time it was really like the really slow pace. Yeah. And that- Yeah, that's what I like about the next time. Okay, Omar, I'm going like, to tell you something very honestly, okay? It really depends from examiner to examiner, okay? Oh. What kind of you cannot I cannot sit here and predict, okay? Nobody can predict, okay? It depends on the examiner, okay? okay? If the examiner oh. is nice like you know and when you go in, I'll just mm-hmm. give you some general tips also when you go in like you know very politely like you know greet them, okay? Say good morning, good afternoon or however you greet in your country, okay? Do that, okay? okay? If you if the examiner is from your local place only okay because okay. so my examiner was from the uk so like you know um it really depends so make sure you greet them with like you know smile or whatever okay and um like you know because it, 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 yeah what are you saying is it really important to uh, maintain an eye contact with the person or Well, it's a good question, actually, Omar. Yes, of course, it's very important. The reason I uh, let me just give you an example, okay? If you were talking to your friend, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or let's say, forget about the friend, because examiner is like a like some teacher or professor, okay, exactly. at the university. If you were talking yeah. to them, won't you look at them? Like, if you were looking around and talking to them, don't you think yeah, it will be that, a bit? That will be rude. And yes. Respect. Right. So you get the point, right? The only oh. reason I gave you this example was to illustrate this oh, thing. Oh, you know the things so whenever you look at him, it's like it just is. Okay, fine. No, we managed. Okay. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Last no. time, first time I did, I did not look at that guy, and like we spoke, uh, like I spoke. Sorry, and uh, yeah, I think. But but now when you gave me that analogy of a friend, so that's yeah, that makes me understand why. It, like some people do that. Mhm. Also like you know when I give you the vocabulary document okay I'm just going to tell you a few words that we use in the UK. So because oh, okay. IELTS at the end of the day is a British exam I hope you know that. Okay. 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 So like you know um here for best friends we say best mate okay that's like a slang yeah, right. like me. So yeah, yeah, use that okay. So um for rain when you used it like you know you could have said like there is some very good vocabulary that you could have used like you know you could have said mm-hmm. when when it's when it is raining torrent when there is torrential rain torrential means like heavy very 
a lot of rain, like you know, like heavy rainfall. I think we can also include the any of like raining cats and dogs or something. Yes. Uh, okay. Now uh, I have to say something. Okay, this is very important. Okay. Yes. Of course, you can use idioms because it's speaking test. Okay. In writing, you cannot do that. Okay. Yeah, right. But having said that, don't try to force so many idioms as if it looks look mm -hmm. like you know you have memorized a whole list of idioms and you just try to force it. If it's if it comes naturally, then it's fine. Okay. just speak naturally okay don't try to okay. show after the exam right this is the worst thing you can do okay so if you think that that is the most appropriate thing mm -hmm. you can do it but like you know don't some people what they do they just make a whole list of idioms and like you know then memorize it and like you know all the sentences are idioms only which is oh. wrong yeah so like you know there is uh, some good vocabulary that you could have used for weather topic okay uh like torrential rain mm -hmm. uh, i like this thing like you know you were using the technique mm -hmm. called compare and contrast because i you asked you, i asked your, you, yeah so i got from your youtube video when you oh, said oh that that's good that's good yeah. that's good that, actually that i'm very happy that you yeah i'm very happy that you watched the video and you learned something yeah. from it so sure. like you know try to do it okay not just for this question for any kind of question like you know if it comes and you can make a comparison okay also there are some general tips like you know try to give examples you did give the examples when you were doing the session with me which is great mm -hmm. so keep it up that really helps okay and in the part 2 also let me just see what i wrote okay yeah samples okay <coughs> okay uh, also here i've got quite i've got a list of vocabulary actually for this one also but i will send you in the document uh, that you can read through okay and then use this similar kind of thing in your exam if it comes up like you know you could have sure. said like you know yes i have very vivid memories oh, when i asked you a question about your school uh, mm. friends at school like you know yeah. primary school friends right yeah you could have said like you know vivid memories vivid means very clear like you know mm -hmm. so yeah. try to you start so you could have said yes i have very vivid memories of my friends at school and that would definitely give you like you know if you use this this kind of vocabulary mm -hmm. this is all like you know band 7 and above vocabulary that i'm telling you so if you actually yes. use that there is no way they can know your score on the vocabulary part actually yeah true then true you can have used like you know kindergarten that's another vocabulary word that you could have yeah. used uh, also I, as i already said like you know in your fluency why i gave you a 7 and not mm -hmm. an 8 or something mm -hmm. is because you were doing like a little bit mm, mm, like that okay and you were repeating quite a few words from the mm -hmm. question yeah. which is not good okay grammatical range is totally fine as already said pronunciation is totally fine i totally understand why they gave you a 7.5 actually now um, but um, yeah so like you know and uh, also one thing i noticed like you know in the first part umer don't try to give very long answers because i i had to like you know kind of like you know interrupt in the middle and ask you the next question oh, okay. which was okay. i i noticed I, like yes remember in the first part okay first part mm -hmm. the examiner is going to ask you about 12 questions okay now if you give very long very very long lengthy answers for the 12 questions he can't ask you 12 questions and they have a limited time for every candidate um, okay. okay so that will affect your score because they can't ask you and judge you judge your lang linguistic abilities exactly exactly because more the question more the right even for me so i can answer them like different ways but if you keep on bragging about the same thing even i would then be you know, repeating words for the same answer yeah and you know you should remember that give the examiner the freedom to ask you all 12 questions so that they can mm -hmm. assess your ability like you know properly mm -hmm. because if you actually restrict them with timing because you are giving so long mm -hmm. answers on one thing mm -hmm. like you know and, and let me tell you something that also limits your ability as well because let's say if you are answering one question right and it was mm -hmm. about weather now you only yeah. have have the ability or like you only have the chance to show off to the mm -hmm. examiner about your weather thing and stuff like that okay but if they ask you all 12 questions you have you can show yeah. the range of vocabulary range of tenses range of everything you understand how what it means yeah different topics means more vocabulary of course exactly and not only vocabulary you have to show the range range not only in vocabulary but also in tenses vocabulary in different kind all these criteria that i just told you your mark in you know and uh, for the part the third part of the test yes would it be uh, uh, would we have to uh, we call answer long question like long answer as well or it should be short 
No, no, for part three, no. I just said for past part one. Okay. Part one. Yeah. Part one, you have to, you should give two to three sentences at max. Okay. Okay. Uh, because three, remember, twelve questions in the first part. So, like you know, don't jeopardize your mark just because you are giving so lengthy answer. But part three is different. It's a discussion. Okay. So in discussion, of course, you should speak. You should give. lengthy answers you should compare and contrast things you should give examples okay you should show your vocabulary you should show a range of your tenses you know some what i mean right yes yes exactly so all these yeah. things okay and i didn't um, know that cuz i used to like take part in like part 1 and part 3 of the same but now we no 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 um, that that's that's a major difference between part 1 and part 3 omer like you know uh, part 1 is like let's say introduction kind of part it's an introduction Yeah. which means you give the answers of course okay mm-hmm. but it should be no more than three sentences no about each okay oh, but yeah. try to use good vocabulary range of tenses and tenses should be appropriate according to the question okay and you are fine with it so you have no problem with tenses but if i was doing it with somebody who has a lot of problem with the tenses then obviously i have to give them more feedback yeah. about that also but uh, exactly. yeah, but uh, like you are you are really good as i already said so that's not a problem for you but there are just one or two bits like you know and you can increase your mark from 7.5 to 8 8.5 even even who knows maybe oh, yeah. if an examiner is good like you know even more than that you never know yeah. so like you know it will definitely help you and um, i'm going to send you the vocabulary document okay Perfect. um i did um i have uh, prepared a document for model answer for this practice wow. session okay uh, yeah. that i'm doing with you so uh, if i'm able to complete it i will send you like you know the model answers that you can use okay perfect for yeah. you and you can use you can use the same kind of thing for other questions which are similar as well i'm sure you understand that right it's yeah. just not one yeah. but yeah, like yes yes so that's how it will work and you should just give me on the facebook group or whatever like you know in the messages just send me your id like you know email id so i can send you both of these yeah, documents sure. I'll, I'll, yeah yeah I'll, i'll send it to you okay yeah no so like you know that's how and uh, to be honest to me don't be uh, like you know don't be nervous at all be very confident okay that's the number one suggestion that i can actually give okay and you have yeah, really, um, you're really well, good at speaking Yeah, first two times it was I would say a bit nervous, but now because I think you're used so to it. So did you get did you yeah. get seven point five both times or was it the recent? Ah, uh, you won't believe it. Both mm-hmm. the time, exact in every uh, section of the I says exact same score for listening eight point five, uh, right reading seven point five, speaking seven point five, and writing which is which is why I'm giving it again is six point five. Okay. So, Okay, so now you know, like you know, I I gave you like you know, uh, a mark for all uh, the four criteria, yeah, and I'm gonna send you the vocabulary as well, uh, level seven and above. Okay, most of it is level eight and level nine, to be honest. Okay, and I will also send you the model answers if you give me your ID also. Okay, for this session. Okay, so best of luck for tomorrow. I'm sure you'll do well. Be confident. Okay, and do let me know what happens. Okay. Sure.